Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, wherever you are, welcome to uh, uh, Dumb SEO Questions, episode 361. Uh, each week uh, we meet here to answer the questions asked on the uh, Dumb SEO Questions community on, on um, Facebook. Well, actually, it's Dumb SEO Questions group um, on Facebook. All right. Um, with us tonight, we have Rob Mars. Um, it, it feels so much like 2005. Um, Rob Mars uh, is an AdWords aficionado. He's based uh, in the uh, Netherlands. Um, he's also a Google product expert uh, on the uh, AdWords community in English, I think. Um, all right, David Razam is a, a leading internet marketer. He's based in West Sussex. Uh, isn't that the same place that uh, Harry and Megan live, uh, David? Um, no, no, it's not. <laughs> uh, they, they live in a place called Canada. Oh, right, 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 right. <laughs> Um, anyway, uh, David uh, is based in uh, West Sussex. You can find David at davidrosam.com. All right, uh, Tim Kappa is um, uh, CEO of onlineownership.com. He's um, based um, about 100 miles north of London in Corby. Um, he's also a Google product expert in the Google My Business uh, community. And Masataki Wasa is webmaster of uh, wasaweb.net. Um, he's uh, also a Google product expert on the uh, um, AdSense uh, community. First question tonight is, uh, uh, it's titled, Nothing Wrong, It's Just the Message. Um, he said, I'm having, I'm having trouble removing a page from my sitemap. I marked it, no index, and now Google is telling me that I have a search console error. Yeah, that's because search console is telling you that <clears throat> this is now no index when it was previously indexed. So, of course, they're going to tell you because something has changed. So, there's nothing wrong. Uh, and it's just the message. They're just informing you. It's not saying, you know, something's broken. Thank you, Tim. Okay, let's um, go to uh, question number two on our run list. It's uh, the title of the missing source is backlinks. What's this about? Ted Rinshed said, I need to start over. I've actually lost some rankings over the last year and I was never able to uh, return to page two on on the big keywords. I do have about 90 in the top 10, but they are low hanging fruit with the small numbers. Mm -hmm. I did have a few wins, however, the best being ranked in the map pack, in the map pack um, for um, uh, several words. Uh, are there any suggestions on starting over with my uh, search engine optimization education? I'll bet that the missing source is backlinks. Oh, that's where that came from. And he said, I only have a few compared to the page one companies. Um, well, you said yourself you're already making inroads. Um, so it kind of depends on links, you know. Um, for a local business, sometimes you only need one or two. Um, your local chamber of commerce could be enough to tip the edge. Uh, you could look at some specific um, you could look at some niche specific citations out there. Um, uh, you could look at some local charities uh, in the area. 
uh, sponsor the local football team. Um, but, you know, when you say you need to start over, you don't need to start over. You just need to build on what you've started. Um, All right, Tim, that, that, that sounds good. Yeah, and um, um, I suppose it, it, it's true to say that a quick game is a good game, but um, slow and steady also wins the race. Um, let's go to number three on our run list. It's from Barry Gordon. Um, he wants to know why the same website has two different audit scores. I, I was hoping to see the answer to this too. Um, can anyone tell me, please, why the same website but different projects have two different audit uh, scores uh, output uh, on SEMrush? There are two projects. The only difference, one is nationwide and the other one is local to assess how we're doing in those specific areas. Why would the audit be different uh, using uh, the, uh, the same uh, website? Um, thanks well, in advance. First thing I'd say is what date were they both crawled? Uh, he, he did say in the comments um, that it was within seconds of each other. Oh, cool. Did you say? Yeah, when, when they were crawled by, by the Simrush yeah, yeah. thing. Yeah, you're right. Sorry. You know, if you <laughs> one was crawled on one day, another the other day, and you made and you fixed, I don't know, two duplicate meta description on one, and then the next day, the next one's going to crawl, doesn't pick that one up, all of a sudden you're two points up. Mm -hmm. I see Dar right. Daria uh, Sir from um, Semrush um, uh, uh, jumped in and answered there too. Okay. All right, let's um, move on to the next. Um, we have uh, number four on our run list. Um, how would you measure the impact of schema markup as the title? Jacob um, said, hi all, a general question here. How would you measure the impact of schema markup? Thanks. Um. I suppose the only way you could really measure the impact of schema markup of if you were doing an event, because then you would have the event rich snippet displayed in search results. Uh, FAQ would be another one where you could visibly see it. Um, um, events, FAQs. That's probably about it. Um, yeah, I, I guess. I guess if these are, uh, if this is schema that, that would lead uh, to to uh, SERP features coming up, then you you see if you have more of them after putting the the schema on. Um, but there's there's also um, the question of whether schema add to overall SERPs. Um, uh, performance some some say yes and others say no um i guess the question is you um <clears throat> excuse me you 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 measure your your search engine performance before you do the work and after um you got to take take care to to know when your uh your pages with the with the schema marker on have been uh have been spidered um, because it's no good saying, okay, the next day nothing's happened if, if, the, uh, if the pages haven't been spidered. I have a horrible feeling I'm talking t to no one. Um, no, you're right. No, oh, okay. You. It's just a video has, has stopped, and I thought maybe I'd, uh, I'd um, been cut off. Um, yeah, but, but basically, good, uh, good experimental design. Make sure that uh, your changes have been... Uh, have been consumed by by Google and see what happens afterwards. Yeah, look, I'm also going to say it depends on the type of markup, you know. 
chucking in like organizational markup across the site, I really don't see that's going to have any impact whatsoever in search results. I don't see how you would measure that. I would just say it's best practice nowadays to provide as much uh, information to search engines as you possibly can. Um, I don't believe that's going to do anything for you, but it's best practice. Um, if your boss is going to say, right, well, how do I measure the impact of that? Well, pff, don't do it. Well, then, you know, the point is it's like, well, it's best practice now. Um, yeah. Fair enough. Thank you, uh, Tim. Uh, thank you, David. All right, let's um, go to number five on our run list. Another one from Jacob uh, uh, Elborn. Um, Jacob uh, asked the question titled, is this some kind of SEO-related trick? Um, there's no such thing as tricks in the SEO. Um, of course you know that, uh, Jacob. Um Anyway, uh, Jacob said, hi, all. I'm stumped right now. I'm trying to figure out how Airbnb uh, ranks their category pages. Um, I performed a Google search for Chicago e Airbnb just to see the structure uh, of um, one of their pages and the SE search engine optimization implications. I enter the page and perform a control F for the word Chicago um, to see how many times that keyword was mentioned, 163 times. But when I actually review the page, I only see it in 18 places. Um, is this some kind of um, trick? Um, where are the other... Um, 140 plus mentions of the word Chicago. Uh, thanks uh, in advance. So firstly, um, <laughs> uh, I don't want you to start because, well, when you said mention of like Chicago, um, my little alarm bell was going on there thinking, oh my God, he's going to go down the road of, you know, trying to keyword density shove things in there um but the, f the, the first <laughs> the first thing okay i'm just redoing that uh, uh, the first thing you'll notice is that a lot of it is in the, in the actual navigation <coughs> plus you've also got you know, you've got your href lang um you've got things like in your og your you know your open graph stuff which is obviously not uh visible on page um um you've got it obviously in the in, in the in the you've got it in your actual um uh navigation i think i already said that oh you know it's it's tons of that um uh images you've got it in images uh, yeah so you know like tons of it is actually not going to be visible on page um yeah there's hardly any visible uh tch, 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 tch. uh it's obviously in the natural and item properties on page yeah so that's that's why you you know you you you're having that thank you tim excellent all right, let's um, move on to number six on our run list. Um, this one from Naveed Ashraf. 
Um, it's titled, Is This a Sign of a Google Penalty? Naveed said, uh, hi, friends. From the last two months, my website ranking has been going down. When I use the site operator uh, and uh, search uh, site colon www.mysite.com in Google, it is showing only seven results, but still some traffic is coming on a few pages, uh, which are on, uh, on a few pages, which are not showing in those seven results. Um, we've um, 1,700 uh, plus pages on our site and Webmaster Tools uh, is showing 1,700 discovered uh, URLs. Um, in Google Webmaster Tool Report, mobile usability, breadcrumbs, logos, all valid values are zero now. No manual actions, no security issues in Webmaster Tools. Um, and in the Webmaster Tools, the internal linking, only the home page is showing in Webmaster Tools, no other link. Earlier, other pages were also showing in the internal linking section, but SEMrush is showing that 88% of our pages have 6 to 15 internal links. Is this the sign of a Google penalty? What steps are required to improve our ranking? And uh, when will Google start crawling our pages again? I don't believe Google stops crawling pages, even if you do have a manual penalty. I've never heard of that. So has Naveed inadvertently blocked bots from calling his site or something like that? Because it, it sounds like that, doesn't it? Because if the site's not being crawled and if the pages are dropping off, then that suggests either that if it's been blocking bots or no indexing, potentially, um, this side. Mm. I want. I think I would be inclined to hop onto Semrush, Semrush again and change the uh, uh, the spider to emulate the Google spider, and see if uh, if anything. Uh, shows up there because Semrush's um, default spider is their own. Um, so I, I I would have a look there, but I I also think that Masataki's idea, and I think it comes up, yeah, it comes up in the community answers, check robots txt and robots meta tags. Um, so yeah, yeah, um, and if you use Search Console and sort of you know throw in a couple of your um, pages, then it would say whether if it's blocked or not, right? Um, you should you test, yeah, you can test live URLs in which yes, yes, and yeah. if it's blocked by robots txt, it would say so. And I think they're listed under excluded as well, aren't they? as a category if it's blocked by robots txt yes um, although um i find um google and master tools google search console as we should call it uh, for the past 20 years or whatever um very odd um i have a um a blog on my my site um that um google supposedly hasn't found in um in google search console but it's also showing that that it's getting search traffic to it so google must have found it must have indexed it and must have put it in uh, in the search so uh google search console is a bit weird <laughs> not that that helps this but it's just something that i was uh, scratching my head about earlier because uh, I thought there's no reason for this page not to be spidered. And uh, um, as I say, uh, it, is, it says on another screen that uh, 
I'm getting search traffic to it. So I have to, uh, I have to conclude that Search Console is telling me porkies. So yeah, I, I would look to see if you've uh, if you've inadvertently blocked something. Uh, I would have a play about with the uh, uh, with the tools within uh, Google Search Console, as Massa said, and I would also try changing the um, the default spider in SEMrush from SEMrush's own one to uh, the one that emulates uh, the, the Google Spider. Cool. All right. Is it safe to move on, or do we have something to add to this? I think I finished. Okay. Thank you, uh, one and all. Sean Clark um, asked a question uh, that probably plagues us all. He said, "Have I messed up my search engine optimization?" He said, so our uh, site uh, was getting about 100 plus visitors a day and then suddenly in the past few days, it has tanked to less than 10. He said, I created a, a duplicate site on a subdomain a few days ago to test some stuff. And that seems to be when the um, uh, traffic tanked. Um, could the fact that the duplicate site was online have uh, anything to do with uh, our traffic dying? The analytics code and plugins were, of course, uh, duplicated. Uh, how can I fix this? Thanks. P.S. Uh, if anyone can help an e-commerce site that uh, cannot advertise and therefore relies entirely on search engine optimization increases, um, increasing its traffic, uh, please let me know. Well, I, I I would um I would point a finger definitely at this uh, duplicate site on the on the subdomain. Um was was that uh, uh was that blocked? Um did you just put it there to play with? Um have you got um Google Search Console installed? Can you have a look to see what's been spidered? Uh, in other words, does Google know about this uh, uh, this duplicate site? Um, so, yes, I, it would that would that would possibly be it. The other thing that strikes me is, without being rude, a hundred plus visitors a day is not a huge number, um, and yes, tanking you've you've lost a very big percentage of your visitors uh, in the past few days um, but you've it's not a great number uh, in the grand scheme of things and it's only a few days so um, I would um, if you if you can look at uh, whether Google has spidered your duplicate site first if it hasn't I would say hang on and see what happens. There's been a lot of uh, changes, a lot of traffic ups and downs uh, uh, going on. Uh, Google's been playing with its uh, uh, with its uh, SERPs, uh, SERP result, search results a lot uh, over the past couple of weeks. There's been lots of squeals of pain. Um, so I would yes I would find out for sure um, the, the facts on on the duplicate site um, and if it's just happens to have gone down the past few days I would say don't do anything else just hang on um, and see if it comes back in thank you David all right uh, let's go to um, it's um, number eight on our run list it's from Anne Marie Dijon um, duplicate content question on tagging is the title um, the question is uh, we tag our products for example tag equals unique card plus tag birth announcement 
bus tag, etc. But these tags show the same products. Is this uh, duplicate content? No. Um, uh, and she gives a uh, URL, which I won't try to uh, read out here, um, but you can see it on the, the WTO Christian Facebook group. Um, and uh, so, anyway. And Marie said that advice is appreciated. <coughs> Don't die on me, Tim. So, the way you've shown those URLs, that just looks like an actual product category. Have you just got tagging it as a product category? I mean, I, um, Okay, so this is, yeah. Hmm. Um, I'm assuming that those tags are also in. Hang, hang on, hang on, hang on. So, you. What was the name of that um, site? Is anyone anyone that got the name of the site? The, this particular site? Yeah. She had it, it in there. It looks like letter pers uh, uh, so L A double T E R P E R S dot N L. I wonder if they're using categories in tags instead of categories, just to quickly understand the um, No, they've got categories. Uh, by the way, you've duplicated your geboorte kaartjes because your I've just looked at that and it's geboorte kaartjes hyphen two. So somewhere along the line, you've duplicated it, and your hang on. Why is your envelopes not in an envelope product category? Uh, hang on, well, I'm just going to pick one and go in as quick to see what you're doing. Mm, this is very slow loading. Uh, Anne-Marie, you need to look at that. Okay, let me just pick. So, I, I don't see where you're tagging these. Um, I can't see it on the actual product itself. Normally, it's displayed uh, somewhere. Cleared. Other suggestions? No. Let's check out the throw carton. Well, Anne Marie, this is so slow loading the site. Okay, let me just pick one. I can't see how you where 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 these tags are. So, what I'm going to suggest to you is, ah, 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 I see you've got them on the bottom here. I finally found them. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. They look like just they are giving away what the product is about so 
as long as it's really targeted at that specific product, then it won't be seen as duplicated content. Well, mm, there are an awful lot of tags per product, so it doesn't make it much easier to select something. Um, yeah, actually, you know, they, they are pretty much the same. You know, um, I'm looking at the, the category page for Geburte Karten and the tag page, which also has multiple pages, obviously page one, page two, and all the same products are in there. <sighs> It's exactly the same, you know, in terms of the layout, because the head of the foot is the same. The only thing is in the category one, they've got a one and uh, they've got a line of sentence, uh, uh, you know, um, one sentence of text. My, my feeling, and I thought it's worth, is that there are miles too many of these tags. Um, because there are almost as many tags as products. I would say that, you know, so the first thing is, is, you know, your tags, you haven't even changed those. It's literally still show, showing in the title that these um, are an archive. Um, I think Google kind of would realize that these that this is you know an archive page. However, you can leave them in your footer there, obviously, as a as a navigational tool. But it may be worth just no marking them as no index. You know, Google can still follow them. Uh, and then it'll go through to the pages, but I mean, you have got, uh, you've literally in your, in your, yeah, you've got as many pages. I mean, like everything. I mean, what, what are we up to here on these ones? You, you have 15 pages of these tag pages in your report, you know, the um, I would probably just say, look, keep them in your, you know, keep them in your footer, it's good for navigation, uh, but I would probably no index them because it's just a lot, a shed load of it, and they're not different in any way, shape or form really. Uh, than your actual product category. Like, you know, when you say tags, so generally the way you want to look at tags is if you wanted to split up your birthday cards, like into, let's say, you know, on the actual card itself, you, you know, you've got S's, you've got things with like S and then T's and then O's and L, you know, like all the different names. You could actually make it, um, you could actually go down and, and make these things more um, refined. So for example, you could create tags or use tags in the product or in the category, you know, for like, um, uh birthday cards with the letter s and then l and o's right which would help people actually cut out all of that stuff 
because I'm looking at the letter S and letter S is on page 15, right? Now, I'm guessing I can get, I can find those in your main navigation, can I? But I would suggest that's probably the better way for you to handle product tags by actually allowing people to navigate to different things. Uh, filter, I'm looking at filter here. How would people find paper sort, paper, color, anyway. I would suggest that's probably the better way for you to handle tags. The tags you've got now, if you don't want to change anything or don't, you know, get into anything, I would probably just no, no index those, set them at no index. Google can follow them because, yeah, and users can follow them. But if you wanted to create a better user experience with what the tags are meant to be doing, I would probably sit and split them out a little bit more, like you've got in your filter, you know, by paper type. Um, things like that, or even even with the even by by name, Sophie's and Tom, or just or just the letters with S, like so, like uh, you know, search quickly with S, things like that, um, or you could do by by by. Um, yeah, I would. Yeah, so that's kind of my suggestion on that. Oh, and check your page speed, your site speed. Super slow for the first time visitor. Once, once you know you've got the cash in, it's okay. But, um, Okay. All right, let's um, move on to uh, <coughs> oh, it's, uh, the, the last one for the evening. Um, question from Andrew Merritt on how many words should I get per article? He said, I'm going to start getting backlinks from my website. Uh, I'm going to get a writer to write an article on each of our products. I've noticed on some Facebook pages, uh, advertising links that there are requirements for a certain amount of words per article. How many words should I um, request um, per article? Um, yeah, that's the whole, whole question. Oh, and I love George G's response. Um, he, he does a great job. But and Michael Martinez and uh, all those other people uh, who uh, also answer questions uh, through the week. Rob Watts, um, and, and thank you guys. Um, your contribution is um, enormously valuable. <coughs> so look, <laughs> Where are these articles for? Are they going on your own site? Uh, I presume not because you said link building. Look, I could write 500 words on open heart surgery or I could write 50,000 words on open heart surgery. The point is, what are you trying to do with that article? Yeah? Are you just trying to create just a little intro to something. Um, are you creating a guide? Are you? It's not how many words you should do. It's what you're trying to create or do with that article. Yeah, I, th I think the 
the thing that worries me is well i think worries georgie um it's um advertising links um are you is, is your purpose here to write uh articles that can be linked to by some link building service um if that's the case be very very careful um as george g says you could end up tanking your website um so don't i'm not sure that how many words should i get per article is is the uh is the question here i think your your link building strategy is, is the is, is the thing and if that is what lies behind this question you you need to to think about not getting those uh, those paid for links um and instead writing some really good quality content for your site um, how many words should I get per article? It's a difficult one. How, how many words should you have your um, your writer um, write? Uh, you need to have a look. Um, you need to see um, what your your competitors are ranking for, what sort of lengths. But before you get into how many words, what is the quality of this? Can they write? Have you got uh, a cheap writer who's just going to produce? uh in 100 words for you for uh for about two cents um how much um how much research has gone into this what are people looking for what are they liable to read um what the semantic uh what semantic backbone is there to this um are, are you targeting um good questions and useful uh searches it goes on and on um how many words is um i don't know it's it's like saying uh what what color is my wall and then trying to figure out how how easy it is or how nice it is to live in your house uh, there are lots and lots of other um other important factors to be taken into account um and I could go on and on and on about writing content, but um, I'm not sure that's that's really what the answer is here. I, I think it's getting backlinks from advertising links. That's 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 what worries me deeply. Okay. Okay. Right. Um... What's the number nine? Yes, it's thank you for watching time. Look, uh, I can't go without thanking uh, you guys, uh, Rob Mars, David Roseanne, Tim Kappa, um, Masataki Wasa. And thank you for turning up and, um, and making this the in the invaluable resource that, that it is. Um, and um, also the, the people who ask, answer questions uh, through the week, um, the, the ones that spring to mind are Rob Watts, uh, Michael Martinez, um, and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll be back uh, at the same time uh, next week to do this um, all again. But if uh, nobody else has anything uh, to add, uh, we'll uh, be closing up now uh, saying good night. Yeah, it's um, good night from him. <laughs>